talking about how I'm a kind of a walking contradiction, USA, a walking USA. contradiction, because. I'm Time for battle. Let's go. Get him! Boom! Boom! Right there! Boom! Nerf gun war. Nerf gun. Reload! Reload! Get him! Get him! Get him! Boom! Parents first kid. Oh yeah. Boom. Mama with the baby bump. Crushing it in Nerf gun wars. There we go. You don't mess around. You know what? Hit them. Don't mess around. Actually, I only hit him twice. That's all right. <laughs> Two for twelve. Here we go. Good job. Good job. Ah. Good job, Michael. Whoa. Okay. There you have it, all right, a good little run through the streets of Denver. Uh, 10 miles, 655 per mile was the pace. There it is in kilometers on your screen. And at this point, it's all going by feel. I think I posted on Strava, um, I said uh, tapering again because uh, the Argentina race is five days away, four days away from when you're watching this. So it's just a unique situation again. This will not be my regular racing schedule, I assure you, racing every two weeks. I don't like to train and race like this, but it's how the, uh, the cards were dealt in 2019, and I'm okay with that. All right, here we go, diving into the World Mountain Running Championships. So, oh man, let me try and break this down, and I don't have all the answers to the uh, to the race down that this is my first time attending the world mountain running championships I really don't even I sadly I don't really know the history behind this event I'll try and do more research this week uh, but it's in Argentina in Via La Angorostura <laughs> and I'm not saying that right but that's all right uh, basically the race starts a little over 2,000 feet above sea level that's great I'm actually pretty excited about uh, not being at high, high altitudes because I do believe because of Amsterdam, because of New York, maybe I can use that leg turnover to my advantage at lower elevations. At least that's what I'm thinking, my logic going into the race. And there's three races, all right? There's the junior race, which I believe happens on Thursday. And that is like a six, uh, let's just see here, six, I think it's six kilometers. Let me just make sure uh, my race. Okay, hold on, sorry. Uh, 6.6 .6 kilometers for the juniors. I think that means you have to be under 18 or maybe under 20. Um, and I should mention this is an IAAF sanctioned event. So it's, you know, sanctioned by the, the huge governing body uh, that helps sanction all the other uh, races, around, all the other, I should say, disciplines within running around the world. Um, so then the other two races, my race is on Friday, and then there's another race on Saturday. I am in the what's called the classic seniors race, um, which is a little over eight miles. Very excited about that. I'm really happy that it's not over 10 or a half marathon, like eight miles. I can do that. My legs can handle eight miles. Um, so, and then on Saturday, it's the long distance race. And for the United States of America to qualify for the classic senior race. That's why I went out to New Hampshire, my brother and I, and I ended up in third place and top four runners qualified for the world uh, championship. Uh, but for the long distance event on Saturday, it's a little interesting. I don't quite understand it. Again, I'm new to this whole mountain running scene. Like I've, I'm, I'm more familiar, let's say with ultra running than let's say like mountain running, which I know they sound similar, but they are different. Um, so for the long distance team, it's more by application. You apply to get on the team, and then I guess there's a selection committee. I don't quite understand it, uh, but it looks like it's, okay, and, and I'm gonna actually need your help. I think it's Joe Gray, 
Andy Wacker, and Hayden Hawks out of Utah. Is it Jim Walmsley? Is he the fourth runner? I honestly don't even know. I've been trying to find more information. It's hard to find. I can't figure it out. I'm going to lean on you. Who is running the long distance race? In my race, the eight mile race, it's Joe Gray, uh, Andy Wacker, myself, and David Sinclair out of Vermont. So that's the four guys. And uh, what else was I going to mention? Uh, so that's amazing. But what's also cool, Andy and I, we ran at the C at CU together, the University of Colorado. We were on the same team up there. And Joe Gray, just he was a little older than me, not by much. We raced, he raced for Oklahoma State. So it's three guys on, on the World Mountain Running Championship team for the United States who all competed against each other in the old Big 12 Conference, which is now, I think, the Big 10. CU has moved on to the Pac-12. Anyway, I just find it fascinating that uh, we're back, like even 10 years later, we're back battling it out again. So, all right, that's a little discussion. Get you going, get you primed. Uh, we'll keep talking about the World Mountain Running Championship as the day moves along. I'm gonna go get my beer stein. There it is, you know what time it is. You know what time it is, so. I should also ask everyone, uh, does anybody have any information about the teams that are gonna be represented in Argentina? I'm just like, listen, Life is busy, I'm trying to do research, but uh, like for example, is Japan gonna send a team? Is Norway, is, I've heard, um, is it Uganda? I think Uganda usually has a strong team, I don't know. I'm all new to this, but if you have any more intel on the teams that are gonna be represented in racing, like I don't even know how many guys I'm gonna be racing against. Um, it'd be fascinating. I'm sure Switzerland, Italy, they've got to be sending teams there. So anyway, if you have any other intel on that, I'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate it. Real quick here, is anybody attending the World Mountain Running Championships? It's a long, it's, it's going to take me 25 hours of travel time to get down there and back so 50 hours of travel it's a lot but if you are somewhere in that region maybe email me and let me know if you're going to be there that'd be amazing to meet you um but i'm plotting yes for a group run in argentina uh, but I, I gotta fine tune the details before i put it on the strava group the demore global running strava running group so stay tuned I just need to iron out how it's going to happen um, probably after the race, okay? So stay tuned. I will get you more details on that. Oh, man. And, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Local folks from Argentina, what, what is like the one plate of food and dessert that I must try while I'm down there in Argentina? I'm putting it on the list. I should probably start a poll about that, but uh, I got to try. I've never been to Argentina. This is... I don't know when I'll ever be back, so this is my moment. Uh, let me know the best dinner plate and the best dessert that I like 100% must eat while there, because uh, that's that's what you do. That's what you do when you travel. You experience the culture. Oh, that's good. Mm -mm -mm. Butter it. All right, I, I know I'm talking a lot, but I just have to tell you right now that I bought this stability disc a month ago. And I've been using one in the gym for years and years, but I, I decided, well, what am I doing? I need this at my house at all times. And I bought it to really work on my ankle strength, okay? But as I fine tune and dive deeper into the stability disc with respect to what it can accomplish in my lower legs, it's stretching out my calf and soleus. Way, it's just way better than pressing against the wall. I, I don't know what's going on. I think it's... The angle of the, uh, the foot and the heel uh, kind of going down into the disc. I don't know what's happening, but I am stretching better than I've ever stretched when it comes to my calves and my soleus, which is obviously important for plantar fasciitis. Um, and I've had issues with that in the past, as you know. Unbelievable. I just, um, I just relaying to you what I'm feeling as I stretch on the stability disc. It's interesting. And don't, you don't have to go out and buy one, but maybe, you know, seek out a gym that, or maybe your gym does not own one and just ask them. They're like 25 bucks. I bet your gym would buy one so you could stretch when you go to the gym. Just an idea. Oh, man. 
Recovery, recovery. The legs aren't perfect yet, but they're getting there. And so we're just gonna give them a little TLC the next couple days before hopping on that airplane. And you better, you better believe, you better believe we're bringing this. You better believe we're bringing this. Oh yeah, I can't go, can't go anywhere now. After Central Park, I can't travel anywhere. And shout out again to Paul in Amsterdam for making this banner for me. Uh, so, oh my, I can't, this is it's going to globe trotting, globe trotting these days. You know what? Let's try on the singlet for you guys. Let's put it on. Let's do this. All right, here we go. So, and by the way, this orange singlet, you may have never seen it before because I've never worn it before on the vlog. I picked this up in Amsterdam since Amsterdam was my first marathon. All right, ready for this? One, two, and three. There it is. Oh, bought it. Oh, man. The red, white, and blue. And it's like, again, getting to Argentina. I just can't wait to meet all the other athletes competing and representing their nations and like their cultures. And like, I don't know, it's just so unique. I think that's what makes the Olympics so great is that there's, I mean, not to get too philosophical here, but there's wars around the world and there's uh, division and strife and fighting and kind of craziness out there. But at the end of the day, we're all human. We're all like on a journey and, um, and like the Olympics brings us together. The World Mountain Running Championships brings us together no matter what nation we're representing. And I couldn't be more proud. I'm a proud American, like I love my country. And, uh, but at the same time, it's like, who knows? Maybe China will be there. There's some angst between the United States and China right now, uh, whatever other nation. But like at the end of the day, we're runners and we're competitive and we're pushing each other to be better, to be better. So, mm, all right. I could go on and on. You know I could go on and on, but I got a pack. So yes, the uh, the USA teams are uh, sponsored by, or yeah, I guess sponsored by Nike. But I did double check. I can race in any shoe that I want. So you know me and Solomon, so it's going to be interesting. All this Nike gear, but showing up to the starting line. That's right, in the Solomon S Lab Sense 7 SGs right there. And yes, I'm just a, a walking... Um, uh, what would it, what's the right word? I'm a walking contradiction because I'm, I'm going to race in Solomon, but I'll do my shakeout runs and my just jogging around runs down in Argentina in the Hoka Evo, uh, Evo Speed Goat. So there you go. Nike, Solomon, and Hoka. Bada bing, bada boom. Talking about how I'm a, kind of a walking contradiction. USA! A walking USA! contradiction. Mwah, because Why I'm all, all, Nike, all Nike gear racing in Solomon. Warming up in Hoka. Oh Be my gosh. Beholden to no the one. Beholden to no the, the American story. This looks amazing, though. It, look, it feels amazing. Yeah, it's it the feels amazing. Yeah, the cut is perfect. Wow. Really nice. So, Michael, what do you USA. think? What do USA. you think? USA. All the way. There's my USA. shoes. I know. Ah, oh, we love it. We love it. All right, wrapping up the vlog with dessert. You better believe it. Chips and double roasted salsa. That is my go-to dessert. I cannot resist. I absolutely love it. And uh, I was going to talk to you a little bit more about the World Mountain Running Championships. Uh, somebody sent me an article. Might have been Dennis uh, a couple days ago. I can't find it now. And it had a little synopsis. So maybe tomorrow if I find the article, I'll uh, give you some more details on the race in Argentina. Question of the day. Um, and I think I've asked this before, but I think it's been a couple months and you know, there's a lot more people here now. So here it is. Uh, what is your uh, favorite discipline or genre within racing? Okay. Is it mountain running? Is it ultra running? And is it trail running? Which believe it or not, those three are different. Is it track? Is it cross country on like on a cross country course, like a real cross country course? Is it the roads? And there's a lot of other options out there. So, and, and maybe if you have time, explain why uh, you love that particular genre. I'll just say right now, why I love marathon racing right now is the communication happening. As I, as I said at the beginning about guys kind of working together to 
track down, and ladies, to track down uh, goals, like pacing. In ultra running, pacing is, um, it's, it's, it's different. It's just a little, whereas marathon racing, you really got to hit those splits and you got to stick to them as I learned in Amsterdam. Um, so anyway, that's, that would be my answer at the moment. Thanks for hitting it up down below. We're going to wrap it up there. Um, I'm going to throw it back to the qualifying race on the right in New Hampshire. And then on the left, I think we'll throw it back to the niche, finding your niche within running since we, we dabbled in that topic as well tonight. All right. Love you all. Thanks for being here. As always, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.